let's talk about tax planning. Let's awesome. talk about tax planning. And, um, you know, most people probably have a tax accountant, right? You know, they probably have been working with their, the, the trusted family tax account or someone that came um, that they're friends with or H&R Block or something like that. Right. What, what, what do you guys recommend for people that are kind of have that relationship or are already with someone? Do, can they come over and be like, hey, let's let the professionals, let's let Prime Corporate Services take care of this? Can they come and do that? Yeah, for sure. And I trust your gut. Right. Going back to your questions earlier of how many wholesalers have they worked with? How many real estate investors have they worked with? Mm -hmm. And how do they understand the tax code changes that happen on an annual basis? Oh, goodness. Right. Annual. I'll, I'll talk to people that are like, I've been in business for 20 years. I've used the same accountant. There's no way I'm switching. And I'm like, that's it's your business. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. However, when was the last time you heard about a new tax code? Right. I, what do you mean? I don't want to deal with it. Neither does your accountant. Right. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about it. For example, there's every year tax code changes where there's a ton of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right? Two years ago, when COVID hits, they say restaurants are impacted. Mm -hmm. We're going to change business meals from 50% deductible to 100% deductible. Wow. For 2021 and 2022. Should I, I should have ate out more, you know? If your accountant let you know, you would have. I didn't know. I have been eating out, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I didn't know that. But yeah, yeah. in addition to that, there's the, they just, right now, gas prices, extremely high. Right. right. So starting July 1st through the end of the year, they just increase the mileage deduction for self-employed individuals. So for those of you that are driving for dollars, mm -hmm. those of you that are using your vehicle for your business... Make sure you're tracking that mileage because we just went from 58 and a half cents a mile to 62 and a half cents a mile from July 1st moving forward. Dang. Right? Mm -hmm. So little, little things. It's a couple cents a mile that we're talking about. But at the end of the year, if you don't understand those changes and you don't have a team of accountants and CPAs that are making you aware of those changes, mm -hmm. the average small business owner leaves about $9,000 a year on the table. No way. Without understanding Seriously? where that money's going, $9,000. That's a small guy. That, you said right. that's the average small that's guy. That's the average, yeah. So, wow. So once you get up there, you're probably leaving a, you know, you could be leaving a ton. Yeah. So do you, do you ever go back and someone bring you, um, you know, maybe they've been working with someone for five years and they say, hey, um, I'd like to work with you. Can you look back over my last five years and help me out and see if I left any money on the table? Do you do that? We do, yeah. We. It's probably, depending, it's probably a big hassle. Yeah, and it, once again, everyone's situation's different, right? Mm -hmm. I think it is important if you switch accountants and CPAs to have them look at the previous year. It makes a lot of sense in a lot of scenarios to go back three years, mm -hmm. but it's usually pretty rare that you want to go back over three years because you're probably... It's, it's probably going to cost you more money than it's worth. Mm -hmm. But depending on your income level, depending on the business that you're in, it's absolutely an option. Cool, cool. So I, you, we talked about planning. And I'm not, for people that aren't sure what tax planning is, I mean, a lot of people just think like, hey, at the end, right before I have to file my taxes, I just got to get all the information ready and give it to my tax guy. That's what I feel like most people do. Right. I do that sometimes too, other than paying um, – I think I pay quarterly, like my, uh, uh, I can't remember what, I pay something quarterly. The, the estimated, there estimated's you, quarterly. There you go. So <laughs> I pay that, but um, yeah, most people don't plan it. So what what do you mean by planning, like I, tax if, planning? Whenever someone asks me tax, tax advice, right, they're always looking for a quick tax code that will save them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I always say there's two things that are very, very important. Number one, hire an accountant or a CPA. Don't file your own taxes, right? You're, what you're, is that, your like worst, the turbo tax stuff? They're, you're your worst advocate. It's, if attorneys hire attorneys, CPAs and accountants have other CPA and accountants file their taxes, right. and there's a reason for it. Sometimes that perspective from the outside looking in, mm -hmm. there's things that you wouldn't have even thought of to write off from a tax standpoint. So number one, hire an accountant or a CPA. Number two, track and organize your expenses somehow, some way. Like QuickBooks or something Whether like that? it's We love QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. We use QuickBooks all the time. Our bookkeepers love, love using QuickBooks. But even if, if it's an Excel spreadsheet, right. if it's one credit card, everyone's situation's different. And if you're brand new, 
I do think there's still benefit in setting up that entity. Right. But I don't think there's benefit to you having a bookkeeper. Yeah. Right? For sure. So if you have a system to track and organize your ordinary and necessary business expenses, it's going to make a massive difference at the end of the year. Okay. Do you guys have any, any like suggestions for uh, for doing that for people that are new, like a, a spreadsheet you give out, or um, anyone at Prime Corporate Services that gives like helps gives advice on like how to keep track of all that stuff? Yeah. So for self-employed real estate investors, there's over two hundred and fifty different deductible expenses from your phone, internet, power, portions of your rent or your mortgage if you have a home office. Yeah. Um, for those people that are tax clients of ours, we do have an organizer that we like to get them just to help them understand what to track, Got what it. to expense. But for people that prefer using technology, uh, Mile IQ is an awesome app to track your mileage. Mile IQ, okay. QuickBooks is great. Do you like Mint? Have you heard of Mint? Mint's great. Mint. Yep. There's another one called Keeper Tax that I've come across over the last couple months. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten a ton of funding, but it's really slick. You can basically put your credit cards, your bank accounts, everything into this one designated app. Okay. And it'll say, was this business related? If you go, if we go get lunch right now, it'll say, was this business related? I text back yes. And it organizes it for Wow. Me. Really slick. Keeper tax? Keeper tax. Let's go. So okay. there's all sorts of technology, all sorts of apps. But at that point, what I think is important, once you're tracking and once you're organizing, the reason you pay estimated quarterlies mm -hmm. is because you're sitting down with your accountant and your CPA and you're looking at your profit and loss. Mm -hmm. So going into the fourth quarter, they should say to you, great job this year. You did awesome either you're paying $20,000 in the form of taxes mm -hmm. or you can reinvest it back into your business. Do you put that back into marketing? Do you put that into the infrastructure of your business? Right. Right. If you're gathering all your stuff up and come tax time around March or April, handing it all over to your accountant or CPA, you're part of that mm -hmm. statistic of leaving 9,000 on the table. Right. Right. So really the, the, the planning starts going into that fourth quarter. Dang, I'm sure you guys have tons of testimonials of people that have been doing it themselves or with their mom and pop shop, and then they come over to you and they're like, "Dang, I was leaving all that money on, this, you know, paying it out when I didn't need to." I'm, I'm sure that happens all the time. One one of the uh, one of the partners and affiliates that we work with had a six hundred thousand dollar tax bill, and that's what ended up having him come to us and start to working with us. And um, you serious? That's crazy. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. I think. I, we, Did you, you get know, it down to about one hundred and fifty, <laughs> about one hundred and fifty thousand? So that I bet he was jumping for joy. Oh my gosh, he still is. Every time, <laughs> every time we talk, he's excited about it. But everyone's situation's different. The more that you understand what to track, you're naturally going to save money in taxes. Wow. Well, sounds like if you are going to grow in this wholesaling, uh, you know, real estate investing business, that Prime Corporate Services is the one that like is the one to go with. Right. You know, if, if, you know, if you go with somebody that doesn't know this industry, you're definitely losing money. I right. mean, you're, you're, you're spending more money, right? Right. That's almost a guarantee. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I, do you guys have any like competitor? I'm just curious. Do you have people that are like as good as you guys are, like that are a competition? I mean, I don't, you don't even have to say their names, but I'm just, you know, there's, it's hard to say. There's probably people that are better based off the specific niches of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. If it's a law firm CPA, if it's a financial firm CPA. But I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I'm sure there's people that are better. There's always things that you right. can learn within a 72,000 page tax code. But based off of the volume that we're able to handle with how many accountants and CPAs that we have and the amount of real estate investors that we're already working with. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk to them if there were. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I guess the reason I asked you that is just because, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really hear about, um, you know, I've been hearing about you guys a lot now, and, but I don't really hear about too many other people that, like, specialize in working with, like, our, I guess, wholesalers, real estate investors. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe right. that's not a topic that comes up a ton, but. Um, a lot of times it goes back to the, the financial planning aspect, the thing that's hard about once you have a very, very large business and you have multiple employees, 
it's easy to hire that in-house counsel and those in-house CPAs, the in-house attorneys. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's great because you have someone that's living and breathing your business all the time. Yeah, that's true. But if you're just getting started, you can't afford an attorney. Mm -hmm. You can't afford that high dollar CPA that maybe could put more focus into your specific situation. And that's where I think Prime Corporate has really excelled is when we started Prime 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. we did it with the little guy in mind, Mm -hmm. someone that's just getting started, someone that hasn't done their first deal yet. And if we can teach them how to set themselves up properly from the very beginning, it's going to be a lot easier for them to grow and scale as opposed to going back three years, five years, 10 years right, right, and saying, what did I miss? No, that's for right. sure. So if someone's brand new and like, let's look at this scenario, brand new, don't, doesn't have an entity and uh, doesn't have a business credit and they want to set up everything with you guys. Let's talk about entity. Let's talk business credit and tax planning. They want to do all that. Do they have to pay for the tax planning and um, what is it called? The tax planning uh, upfront, or is that paid once the taxes are filed? Like, how does that work? I'm just yeah. Curious. Generally, generally speak, so the entity setups upfront, the business credits upfront, the tax we usually like to do upfront as well because we want to do the planning, mm-hmm. right? A lot of times you don't pay your taxes until they're filed mm-hmm. because there's no work that's been done beforehand. But that's what we preach. Mm -hmm. We want you to plan. We want you to have that quarterly meeting. We want you to have someone that you can call and that you can email. So if we're filing those taxes, we generally do like to get a commitment from somebody up front to show that they're committed to reach out, committed to having those conversations that will make the big difference Obviously, at the end of the year. So, so planning, but you would you pay as well when you you filed, or is that done up front? And you're saying it just depends on what your business is. If okay. you have ten businesses, you're probably going to pay up front and on the back end. Okay, if you got yeah, one, yeah. it's usually pretty straightforward, and we're able to streamline the process. Got it. Got so, it. depending on how many businesses you have, depending on how many deals you've done, depending on how organized you were able to stay throughout the year, those are all components that are going to make a big difference because most accountants and CPAs are either going to tell you that they charge by the hour or they're going to tell you they charge by the form. Mm -hmm. So if they charge by the hour, I usually say turn around and run. (laughs) And the reason I say it is because you don't know how efficiently they work. Right. You don't know how much other, other things that they have going on. You don't know if they need to charge you for research and development because you had a unique scenario this year. Mm -hmm. Right. On the flip side, if they're charging by form, the average for accountants and CPAs is four to $600 of form, Mm -hmm. personal taxes, a form business taxes, a form. So what I don't want that to do is get very expensive as you get more successful. Mm. If you can track those up front, and you can have someone that you can call or email on an annual basis, it's naturally going to be a lot easier to keep that cost down. So the cool. sooner you're set up the right way and the sooner you're tracking your expenses, the less expensive it'll be long-term. Yeah, no, that's that's super cool. And um, it's not something a lot of people talk about. A lot of people don't talk about entities like we're talking about business credit, tax, planning, estate planning. But I think uh, you know, as you level up, you got to have – like I said, the right people in your corner right. or you're going to be wasting a lot of your money. Um, is there anything else that you, you know, we, you think we should talk about when it comes down to, um, you know, tax planning, filing, hire an accountant and a CPA and organize your expenses, please. <laughs> if you could make sure that you're doing that, you can get away from that statistic of the 9,000 that's left on the table because the rude reality is anyone that watches this has the intent to be self-employed. Right. And that's all the IRS is looking for is, do you have the intent to treat and operate as a business? You know, and and what you just asked Investors Drive Nation to do is very simple, right? I've been doing that for the last, like, you know, however long I've been self-employed, been working for myself. Like, it seems like you ask people to do it, like, they don't do that. Is that, do some people not have a a tax account or a CPA or? It's, It's very, very common that they're just piecing things together or they, you know, go to the local H and R block or the local Jackson Hewitt, it's <laughs> aunt, uncle. It's, Sounds that's like okay. Terrible, no <laughs> knock to them. But well, it's, I mean, if you want to pay more money, it's okay. It's not, you know, because right. most of the time they're not going to catch everything. They might do it like, you know, here and there for a couple people, but you guys are seeing, like you said, the, what did you say, 72,000 tax codes like that change? Or? Right. 
And even one of, one of the things that one of, one of our CPAs, one of my favorite CPAs on our staff, I'm not going to say his name because then everyone's going to call you, back and you ask You got to give him the name. But uh, <laughs> one, one of the things that he said was accountants and CPAs were initially created to defend people from the IRS. Really? And a lot of accountants and CPAs nowadays are just trying to get taxes filed because that's how they get paid. So you should have someone that's on your team, that's on your side, that's helping you understand what the rules and regulations are. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. It's crazy. And uh, it's a game. The more you understand how to play the game, the easier it is to win. Cool, cool. Well, I mean, that's been some awesome information on, you know, tax planning and filing. And it sounds like you guys, anyone that joins to work with Prime Corporate Services is going to have a rock star in their corner that's going to, they're going to be able to reach out to and they're going to understand. And that's been one of my biggest issues with working with taxes, uh, tax accountants in the past is I ask questions and they don't answer my questions. But it sounds like, you know, you guys, when you do the planning, you, 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 help, you explain it and you help the person understand what's going on. For sure. And it's, and there's, and there's times where I get asked a question and it's, I don't know, let me find it out. That's okay as well, as long as they find it out and come back to you. Yeah. But they got to come back to you and they got to help you understand what the solution is for that problem. And that's where I love our team of accountants and CPAs is if you ask me a question that I don't know, I get to go talk to 40 accountants and CPAs that then get to communicate amongst each other to find a solution for a real estate investor that's indirectly impacting the other thousands that we're filing on an annual basis. I think there's a lot of power to that. That's powerful. If you're working with one individual or someone that doesn't file a lot of real estate investors, you don't have that luxury. Well, it sounds like what you guys got over there. I've been to your office. It sounds like it's like a mastermind in itself over there. You know, right. people just, you know, a bunch of minds coming together and, you know, improve, you know, improving other people's accounts. Maybe some guy faces another thing. Everyone can learn from that. That's that's what it's all about. The more that you can collaborate, the more that you can, if you hear something in one area, paying your children, right? You can pay your children up to $12,000 a year as long as they're doing actual business. Have them fill out the mailers. Have them put them in envelopes. Have them work as modeling, right? There's a lot of things you can do to pay wow. your children as well that end up making a big difference tax-wise. Didn't know that. My daughter's a model. She makes $12,000 a year. Yes. That is awesome. That's good stuff. Hey, well, I got to start. I, I don't have any kids yet, but once I do, that, baby, gotcha. that baby's going to work. Better believe it. <laughs> that baby's being a model. <laughs>